intercepting prisoner contraband communication. Yes, that's right, contraband communication. I want to talk about why it is so important that our frontline officers, as well as our internal investigators, keep their eyes and ears open to hear and find out about contraband communication. I want to talk about how we can monitor communication between inmates and visitors, between inmates and their phone calls, between inmates and other inmates, and why it is so important for us to always have our ears open and catch that one sentence that could save an escape, that could save a bundle of drugs from coming in, that could save a weapon from coming in, that could save an officer's life or a prison staff member's life because of a threat against life. I also want to discuss what is legal for us to use and what we cannot use why it is so important that we document what we heard or what we found on written or telephonic communications, even in the visitation area. And we document that and turn that in on an incident report. That incident report could be very important later on down the road if we uncover criminal activity that ends up in a courtroom. Hi, I'm Gary York. Please subscribe if you like this video. Now, I want to talk about uh, a few areas that we must monitor, okay? I'm going to start with the visitation area, not with the telephone monitoring or, or written communication. Yes, the visitation area. My uh, little thumbnail for this uh, YouTube kind of tells it all, you know, the ladies visiting her husband and she says my god why are you look why do you look so dirty have you been playing around in that tunnel again and the officer standing there did the officer hear that let's hope so i know that could be far-fetched and some people are saying they're not that stupid to talk about things in the visitation room that would give away uh what they're doing or give away contraband they're they're going to bring in well I won't use the word stupid, but let me tell you what. People talk and people say things without thinking. And things have been said in the visitation room that go beyond the unbelievable. Let me tell you. And that cartoon is really not that far-fetched. So if we hear something like that in the visitation room, write an incident report. I would hope that your chain of command would take that incident report seriously. Can we use that? Well, let's, let me tell you a few things. Number one, um, in the visitation room, uh, there is, is it's, it's public. It's a public area. And many states in the, in the statutes have it written down that that is a public area. Things that are said in there can be used for several reasons. Number one, safety and security in the institution. Uh, penological reasons, right? Penological reasons, phonology, the, the prison system. We, we have to have um, a system built in that we can use these type things for the safety and security of everyone behind the razor wire. Now, I would love for every agency to have their policies and procedures up to date, stating all the areas that we can use communication from inmates to uh, build a case or protect the institution. And some may be saying right now, well, if it's in the statutes, if it's in the state statutes, why? Why do we even need it in our policy and procedure? Well, here's why. Because if something is overheard in visitation or we gather information, uh, written communication, or we uh, find contraband communication on the phone system, it's got to be in our policy and procedure. Because if this leads to a criminal case and there is no plea agreement and it ends up in court, the defense attorney, 
listen now, the defense attorney will use every single loophole available to put doubt in the jurors' minds. Everybody probably agrees with me that you would think state statute says we can do it, so what's the big deal? But I'm going to tell you, here is what a defense attorney will do. They'll have the officer on the stand. They'll have the policy maker on the stand for your prison, whether that be an administrator or whoever your policy makers are for your agency. And the defense attorney will say, isn't it right that you don't have a policy and procedure written anywhere that says you can obtain this information that you overheard in visitation or you overheard uh, inmates talking about or you overheard on a phone call? And that may sound far-fetched, but when you're a defense attorney, you're trying to find everything wrong that you, the officer, did, you, the administration, did. Build these policies and procedures up to match your state statutes. Now you have state statute. Now, I'm the officer on the stand. Uh, in answer to your question, the state statute backs me up, and so does my agency policy and procedure in, in what I did when I wrote this incident report regarding what I heard that day. And the defense attorney may say, well, what is your policy and procedure? will know that policy and procedure. Tell them, policy and procedure such and such says that if I uh, receive any information that could be harmful or threaten the safety and security of our jail, of our prison, of people behind the wall, um, you know, and recite that to them, it doesn't have to be exact, but let the jurors know, yes, you're answering the question of the defense attorney, but when he asks that question or she asks that question, turn away from the uh, defense attorney and look at the jurors and say, well, we have policy and procedure in place to protect everyone. And such and such policy and procedure allowed me to um, take the information that I heard and write an incident report as I'm required to do and turn that into my supervisors. Now you've stopped the public defender from trying to find a loophole because all they want to do is give the jurors something to talk about when they go back in the jury room. Most jurors that I have found are smart. They're, they know what's going on. They can read between the lines. They could probably go back and say, well, the officer didn't know what policy and procedure gives him or her that right, but they knew there's a state statute that gives them that right. But I would like for the jurors to know that I know what's going on and I know my game and I know how to, um, what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do, okay? Let the jurors know you know what's going on and get that defense attorney's uh, probe off your back. So with that said, I just wanted to do a little bit of, of court testimony there because all these things we find could eventually end up in court. I've had to testify in court many times on things that I found over the phone uh, after I was an officer and became an internal investigator. We find code words that they use on the phone. Sticky green could be marijuana. Bring me some balloons for my birthday. Well, the balloons could be balloons that are actually containing drugs that are inserted in a body cavity of a visitor. A visitor is talking... Uh, in private and you overhear the visitor say, well, I'll bring you the balloons next week. I'll bring you the balloons. Well, bring him, bring the balloons should be a big sign right there because you're not allowed to bring anything into visitation. I'll bring you the balloons next weekend. You overhear that. You want to do an incident report on the inmate, who, who the inmate was, who the visitor was. And it wouldn't hurt to uh, pull a copy of the visitation log and clip it to your uh, incident report and put in your incident report exactly what you heard word for word. You don't change it, just put what they say. Um, intercepting contraband communication by prisoners is a great source of safety and security for your institution. It's part of your job. You as frontline correctional officers need to always be listening and think like an investigator. 
because you are the cops on the beat in your jail or prison. You need to know what's going on at all times and you need to document anything that seems out of the ordinary. Documentation is key to the safety and security of your institution. Documenting uh, is a, a, an inmate threat that you overhear. You, if you hear an inmate tell another inmate, I'm going to beat officer so-and-so's ass or I like that librarian, she's hot, Anything like that. If you hear that, do an incident report. You ignore the fact that you heard an inmate tell another inmate, I really like that librarian. That's why I hang out in that library so much because she's hot. And you don't do anything about that. And that contraband communication was not uh, reported. And a week later, there's a rape in your institution and it's the librarian and it's that same inmate. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. This really happens. These things really happen in prisons and jails. So why didn't you write that up? You could have saved that librarian from being sexually assaulted. We could have gotten that inmate into a private interview and disciplined the inmate with a, with a DR, if your agency allows. Does your And that's a good question. Does your agency allow you to write a disciplinary report or corrective counseling on inmates who say things like that. I think it should be done. I know it's not happening in a lot of places. It's obvious by some of the articles I'm seeing coming out on corrections1.com, coming out in the newspapers. You know, we have got to be diligent in listening to what's going on with the inmate population. Gang signs gang uh, codes when you find a letter from an inmate with a lot of gang uh, paraphernalia on there don't just throw it away don't just uh, ignore it my god write an incident report staple that letter that contraband letter to uh, the back of your incident report Make copies for yourself, by the way, in case you end up in court over it. Make copies for yourself and turn that in. If your management and chain of command ignores that, you've done your job, Frontline, and you've got evidence because you made copies of it. I would hope they never ignore something like that and let it go on up the chain of command and assign it to an investigator if need be. They know, believe me, your chain of command knows when they should report to the uh, IG office, what they should report to the IG office, and how long they have to report it to the IG office. Let's hope they follow their standards as well, right? Because we expect the front line to do their job. We also expect our chain of command to be up to date, knowledgeable, and not ignore things that need to be looked into. All right. So I think uh, I've got the message across. Uh, we know we can listen to inmate phone calls. We know that when they're incarcerated, they can lose their right to privacy. That's why we can record their phone calls and listen to their phone calls. Someone, one state, I, I think it was California at one point was arguing, the defense was, arguing, okay, you can only use the phone calls for crimes that were committed within the prison or the jail. And I read recently where at some point that changed. If they admit to murdering someone on the street, it's also important that we intercept contraband communication from prisoners for our street detectives to solve crimes con committed on the street. Another reason it's so important that we stay on top of contraband communication from the front line through the chain of command to the internal investigators. Please, let's all work together as a team and use contraband communication to our benefit to save lives and protect everyone behind the razor wire. Thank you very much for listening. Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe.